At this point of the unit, we're actually going to start looking at calculations involving concentration. Um, so we're going to start calculating um, the various levels of concentration you can have. So let's begin. Recall that unsaturated solutions can have variable composition. So that was a definition you had to do at the beginning of the unit, but if you forget what that means, the quantity of solute per solvent can change. Right? And that might seem like a uh, complicated way of saying something very simple. You can have a glass of water and you can dissolve one teaspoon of sugar, or you could dissolve two teaspoons of sugar, or you could dissolve three teaspoons of sugar. That would mean that you have different concentrations of sugar in each different glass. Right? So um, variable composition means that if it's unsaturated, uh, there are many different possible concentrations that you can have. The solubility of a substance is the maximum quantity of solute per quantity of solvent. So solubility, again, that is a very key word. Solubility means the maximum quantity right, of solute per solvent. So the solubility relates to saturation, right? when solubility is the saturation level of the solute per solvent. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a number of calculations here on uh, different types of concentrations. So the first thing that we are going to look at is percent volume, which is milliliters of solute per milliliters of solution. So that's how you do a percent volume. Let's take a look at the sample problem here. A photographic stop bath contains 140 milliliters of pure acetic acid and 500 milliliters of solution determine the concentration, the percentage concentration by volume. So what we'll do here is we'll say percent V per V is equal to milliliters of solute all over milliliters of solution times 100 percent. So in this case, my solute is the acetic acid, so 140 milliliters of acetic acid, 500 milliliters of solution, 500 milliliters, times 100%, three significant figures, three significant figures. My final answer is 28.0%. So the percent volume per volume of acetic acid in solution is 28.0%, or we would say even 28.0% volume per volume. Okay. You may be wondering where we uh, might encounter this uh, percent volume per volume uh, type of concentration, and it's so common. We actually encounter it in um, uh, like, alcoholic drinks such as beers, uh, wines, and liqueurs. So this is a um, uh, very uh, well-known Italian liqueur. It's called uh, Liquore Strega, okay? And as you can see here, it's given 42, and it says a comma because it's uh, an Italian bottle, right? So they don't use decimals, they use commas. A percent alcohol volume. So 42.5 per uh, milliliters is alcohol, so ethanol, in 100 milliliters of the solution. Okay, the next one is determine the mass of hydrogen peroxide in 23, uh, 232 milliliters of a 3 um, mass per volume solution. So we're going to use mass over volume, so grams per milliliter of solution. So this one will go as follows. Grams of solute over milliliters of solution times 100%. So in this case, I have the percentage. I have the milliliters of solution and they want to tell me or they want me to find uh, the mass of the hydrogen peroxide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 3.00% um, is equal to the mass of the hydrogen peroxide over 232 milliliters times 100 percent. 
Okay, so then I need to um, divide both sides by 100%. Okay. So divide by 100%, divide by 100%. Okay, this will cancel, this will cancel. And I get 0 0.03 is equal to the mass of H2O2 over 232. And note that you can actually go straight to this step if you wanted to just quickly convert that into a decimal, as it is here. And then we'll find the mass of H2O2. So 0 0.03 times 232 is equal to the mass of H2O2. And that equals to mass of H2O2 is equal to 6.96 grams. Okay. All right, so um, let's see if we can find something around the house that has uh, a mass per volume um, concentration on it. Okay, so I've actually located a bottle of hydrogen peroxide right here. Okay, as we can see here, hydrogen peroxide, 3% W per V. Well, W is just sort of an antiquated, which means an old way of saying mass per volume, right? See? Uh, percent W over volume. Typically now, uh, we should be representing it as percent M uh, over V. Okay, so the final uh, concentration that we are going to look at is uh, percent mass per mass. So determine the mass of gold in a 14% mass per mass gold silver alloy ring made with 2.5 grams of silver. Well, percent mass per mass is grams of solute over grams of solution. So mass of solute over mass of solution. Here's the issue though. The solution is a gold silver, sorry, gold silver alloy. So that means the solution is made up of both gold and silver. So when we go to do this calculation, we'll have to have in the solution both gold and silver. So I'm going to take this percent and I'm going to convert it to a decimal right away. 0 0.14. They want the mass of the gold. So the mass of gold per mass of solution. But the solution, like I said, is gold and silver together. The mass of gold and the mass of silver. So mass of gold plus the mass of silver, which is 2.5. So I have to get mass of gold by itself. I have to isolate for that. So I'm going to take uh, both sides and I'm going to multiply by mass of gold plus the 2.5. And what that will do is that will allow me to cancel there and there. And then I can distribute this in to the bracket. So I will have 0 0.14 mass of gold plus 0 0.14 times 2.5, which is equal to 0 0.35. And since this and this canceled, I'm just left with mass of gold. I'm going to subtract this from both sides to bring this over to this side. So 0 0.35 is equal to the mass of gold minus 0 0.14 mass of gold. And there's like a 1 there, so 1 of these minus 0.14 of these. 0 0.35 is equal to 0 0.86 mass of gold, right, because there's a coefficient of 1 there, so there's 1 mass of gold minus 0.14 mass of gold is equal to 0.86 mass of gold, so therefore to find the mass of gold, I do 0 0.35 divided by 0 0.86, and so the mass of gold in that ring was 0 0.41 grams of gold. Okay, so this is a much more complex calculation because the mass of the solute has to be incorporated 
into the mass of the solution. And where in real life uh, do we encounter this type of concentration? Well, we encounter this in toothpaste. So we look at the back right here, and you will see that the medicinal ingredient in toothpaste is sodium fluoride, and uh, it is at a percentage of 0.243%. And again, they're using Ws, uh, which is just maybe a more commercial way of uh, using mass per mass. Okay, um, 0.243, right? And um, this is actually a pretty standard concentration of sodium fluoride. If you look at almost all the toothpastes on this shelf um, in a drugstore or um, in a um, grocery store, you'll find that the medicinal ingredient, uh, which is sodium fluoride, is standard. It's 0.243. Um, in most toothpastes. Uh, the reason why toothpastes differ is uh, because of all the extra things that they add, such as like extra whitening or like advanced freshness, so on and so forth. Okay, questions uh, to be answered are down here. The answers are at the back of the package. Thanks for watching.